we try to uh, elaborate. So basically, uh, Ziegler Nata is they are uh, organometallic. They are organometallic catalysts. So organometallic, and they are related to the stereo, uh, the stereo chemistry or stereochemical structure. Which means if we want to make, uh, for example, syndiotactic or isotactic or adjust their tacticity, uh, we can use this catalyst. And, and this is really significant, significant uh, improvement, especially for a polyethylene and polypropylene. Okay. Both of these um, can be tailored using this catalyst, and we can make sure their tacticity, okay, they can be an isotactic. Okay. And then we discuss also uh, that the linear polyethylene we can obtain by this heterogeneous catalyst because they are homogeneous and heterogeneous. But I think we are we don't have much time to discuss in details or more on this subject. But I hope essentials essentials in uh, Ziegler Nata catalyst you can um, you can get the idea. So Ziegler Nata catalyst based on transition metals, the organometallics, uh, halides. And then we can see some reactions, which we call the reaction insertion reaction because we simply insert something inside the, uh, uh, the catalyst or at the catalyst center to prevent the side chain formations, which means that there will be, there will be some adjustment on the tacticity. Okay, this will affect the tacticity. And for substituted mon uh, monomers, we can we can have the stereo regular poly polymers. Okay. I think we we already mentioned this, and I think last one, uh, yeah, we discuss on uh, the process. So first, we 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 build the active site, the formation of active site. This is okay, as long as get the idea. So we get the active site, which means that. Uh, it will be prepared through the, uh, the the catalyst, which means this is our catalyst here. This titanium chloride or the aluminium. So the titanium and aluminium is the, the metals that we we, we built on. Uh, the catalyst is I think Ziegler Nata catalyst has a lot. I think several type catalysts, but this is just a, uh, the essential one, the titanium. So we make the three D orbital on the center, and then. We get the complex formation, and then from here we are getting the idea of how to uh, to make the orientation, in which which side that it will be preferred. Okay, uh, we can adjust tacticity, and then we insert the double bond into the titanium carbon bond, and then we form the the orbital here. We form the, the orbital, and then because of the uh, the differences on the electronegativity. So we can uh, affect the, um, the reactions. And then we see that this, it will migrate the organic chain into the initial position, which we see uh, it will be, uh, so from here, so that we, uh, we active the, uh, the D orbital, okay. and then getting the double bonds, if the final monomers getting inside the titanium, so insertion of double bond into titanium here, so insertion. And then migration, so this this will be migrated. This will be migrated. Okay. Yes. So this will be. So my migrate, migrated. So this will be. This is insertion, or maybe using like red color. So this is will be insertion. So it will be migrate to the initial positions, and then you see that. Uh, it will make this uh, preferred side chain, and then it will connect this carbon into the titanium, and see that it can be this uh, side chain that we uh, would prefer. And this will be for uh, so 
this is on, we, we see only one element, right? But this is actually you know in a, in a polymer network. So we see the polymer and has the side chain, side chain, side chain, which the same has the same preferred orientation. So that's that will be the um, process. Okay. But I think as long as you understand the understand the, the essentials, uh, and I think not really much uh, details that I can offer for the um, the chemical reaction and structure, because I think that will be in another lecture or, or in another um, specific sections that I think in our case, uh, it will be in, uh, not enough time if, if we cover all these zigolinata catalysts. Sometimes zigolinata catalysts, this is related to the, we call also the, uh, uh, the coordination, coordination uh, polymerization. So if some, some textbooks, they, can, uh, they, involving, they are involving this Ziegler-Natta catalyst or Ziegler-Natta polymerization in what we call the coordination polymerization. So if you want to maybe um, look on some textbook, you can find in the coordination okay, polymerization. You'll find that one of them is Ziegler-Natta catalyst. Okay, and this is just... Um, some details, so we can see the monomer insertion, which means that uh, we can see that the pits R will be, so this will be uh, the, the monomers, the final monomers that will go make some polymerization here within this active site, and then it will be made right here. Or maybe let me add some notes here. Um, the electron donor forms a complex. With the uh, metal compounds. And this is simply control uh, the stereo specificity or or just stereo and tacticity of the polymerization which means uh, the orientations okay, the orientation of the polymers or the side chain in, in the polymers and this titanium is actually, I think, the most common. Uh, so titanium is most common uh, catalyst in this uh, ziegler natta catalyst. Okay. And usually this is um used for production of the HDPE, the high uh, density polyethylene, and then linear low density polyethylene also. And then the, the isotactic uh, propylene, it is also uh, can be done with this catalyst. And this is another another um, explanations. This is just um, some detailed, but not much details. Okay. 
So after initial coordination of the monomer at the uh, vacant d orbital, the vacant d orbital is here. This is vacant, vacant. Vacant d orbital, it is inserted into the titanium carbon. Okay, so this is some uh, some notes. Okay, I think this is just um, elaboration from the previous process. So monomer initially coordinated at the vacant d orbitals, okay, and then orientation of coordinate molecule monomer determined by the steric and electronic interactions. Steric, steric. If you are confused what this word means, steric means, uh, for example, if you have the benzene, it's big, right? So the shape is big, and it will make it uh, hard to move. So steric means that it is also related to shape. So the more it has, maybe the more like bulk, the bulky it will, polymer will be, uh, or maybe the bulk optional groups, maybe it will be very difficult to um, to move. Okay. So how we uh, orientation is based on the shape and then the electronic interactions. Okay, the electronic okay. And then uh, that will be uh, uh, related to the trans, uh, the ligands in the um, metal metals. Okay. And then the propagation is completed by the insertion. We insert the uh, double bond. Okay. And then orientation will be determined by, uh, by the, uh, so as we insert the, uh, the, the double bond, we can determine the configuration of the, uh, the carbon atom. And then we we'll repeat the unit, and then the isotactic polymer will form when we already have the preferred orientation. And of course, that preferred orientation is based on the, the energy level. So, for example, if the energy level is uh, is quite low, then the polymers will uh, will form that shape. And I think you can also think. Um, within the thermodynamics perspective, okay. I think you have learned the Gibbs energy, okay, that's the energy level. So the more, the lower the energy will be, that will be the, the, the preferred uh, shape or the preferred form for the polymer, okay? because it's easy to, um, to process, right? The, the, low one, the lower one. And then, this one over insertion this will lead to the linear polymer change. So we are going to have linear polymer change with a so linear polymer change with a same uh, same orientation. Okay. okay, that's the Ziegler Nata catalyst, and this is some other uh, aspect that can be done. Yeah, but I think I will just skip this one just to show you uh, how we transfer the hydride and then change hydride to monomer. I think this is too much uh, elaborated, but I think I can skip this one. 
and just go to the summary for our uh, polymer synthesis. So first, we can do the ionic polymerization. If you remember, we have half ionic, we have half ionic. We can have polymerization of final monomer. We can, we can process this final through the ions, the ionic polymerization. And then the more attractive one, the anionic polymerization, which is, we can see that there are part of this polymerization that is, we say it's living. So we will, we will not have any dead polymer. So the polymerization will occur as long as they are still have monomers. Okay. And then we can we can try to further elaborate the sleeping polymerization. So instead of taking the anionic, we can also control the radical. Okay. We say this is sleeping radical polymerization, which means the radical, as long as it's still there, we can control the radical by first is we have the ATRP, atomic transfer radical polymerization, and LRA, RAS. The second one is RAS, right? The difference is for ATRP, we cover the radical, we, make, we take cover like a shield, and then we open when we want to polymerize. For RAS, the electron will go in forward, backward, forward, backwards. And that's the difference. So the, so the first one is we stop. For, for some, uh, uh, maybe some period of time, and then we polymerize again. For the second, we see it, it will be going forward and backwards. Okay. So, uh, activate the activate, activate, or you can see. And uh, for both cases, we need to uh, to take it in, in terms of thermodynamics, we need to subtract the reaction to the, uh, to the deactivation, right? because we want it somehow later to stop. Well, it's, it's not really stopping, but maybe stop uh, temporary for the living polymerization. And then some features for this living is low PDI, body dispersity index, if you remember what it is. Uh, then uh, we see that the, uh, the molecular weight will be narrow okay, if we distribute into the graphics, it will be narrow. Easy to control like your weight because we just put all together and then it will polymerize by itself, right? And then we can also um, synthesize block of polymers through this living polymerization. And then block of polymers we are going to discuss much more after this um, uh, chapter. Okay. And then the catalytic insertion, which is the Ziegler method, please. It will lead to the linear sterile uh, regular polymers. So we are going to have a linear polymer with, with the same uh, orientation. Okay. You can say you can adjust or tailor the tacticity okay, the tacticity of this uh, polymer. Okay. So that, that is summary that uh, that we we'll, we are having within this polymer synthesis, and which means that the synthesis part for our plants, okay, this will be the last one. Okay. The next one is much more. Uh, perhaps the synthesis is more um, conceptual, not really in details, like some chemical reaction and so on. And we are going to focus more on the structure, on the process, and aside from the synthesis. Which means that I will uh, upload the notes on the Moodle and hopefully you can maybe review the uh, the notes and maybe prepare for the final exam taking that part into the uh, notes your your a4 notes okay Okay, now we move to the next sections, which is we call the polymer special ar architecture. Okay. This is, um, I think, uh, just like us, I think this additional topic on, on the term special architecture, we're going to see at least three, uh, three different uh, sections. 
So we are going to first talk on hydrogel or polymer gels. The second is the block of polymers that we are going to talk, and then the poly electrolyte. Some of the subject within these three uh, different sections, some of the subject may require you to read some scientific papers, and I hope you can get used to reading them apart. And especially if you are interested in uh, research or perhaps you want to know more on uh, for example like nanochemistry or nano technology within this polymer and how to synthesis or maybe how how is the application okay we are going to see some of it and then uh, the rest is you can try to uh, uh, find and discover uh, within your um, area of research probably or maybe uh, industry if you want to look more into the polymer industry because polymer industry kind of and I think it's I think in I think in all most of the subject especially related to the high high technology and in semiconductor and so on and so forth they need to have uh, some technology to, to, to prepare the polymers, right? So I think this will be very important. Okay, let's start with the uh, introduction first. That what we have been done, okay, or perhaps in in a more uh, constructive way, we see that at least we have five components in the polymers. The polymer science. This is uh, the from fundamentals, okay, from the concept, and then, and then to product, okay, we can we can try to make product based on the fundamentals of the polymer, and then we not, we 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 then the, uh, some topics on the synthesis, which means we know the of the chemistry, okay, and of course uh, the the more elaborated part for this polymer chemistry is the lecture polymer chemistry in another part, right? So this is more detailed and elaborated synthesis. Okay. How do we synthesize polymers? We know from the polymer chemistry and then polymer physics. This is related to the uh, structure. Okay. How the structure is related to the property. Okay. Like you, like when you learn material science, you change the structure, you change the property. And the way you change the structure is basically how to synthesize the polymer. So this is all uh, connected. And then. The material itself, this will be related to this structure. So, what is the property? Okay. And then, of course, the last one is process. How to process, okay. to fabricate, how to fabricate the products, and the final product of the uh, polymers. Uh, I think this is what we are going to try to, um, to explain later on. Okay. So, let's start from the special architecture. The first one is the uh, polymer gel or hydro gel. So if I, uh, if I say gel, what kind of material you could you perhaps imagine? Like maybe you usually when you take shampoo, maybe some of the shampoo is not really liquid, maybe like a gel. Right? Or anyone using contact lens or Try it once. If you, if you uh, like uh, squeeze the contact lens a little bit, it's like it's squeezy, right? like like uh, or like uh, for kids, like slime. You can stretch it. Uh, I just remember my daughter used to play it a lot. Okay? It's, it's like a like a jelly, right? like a jelly. Okay? So if you remember the polymer gel in terms of uh, polymer. We remember the gel. We have the gel point, right, in the polymer synthesis in the step growth, where we want to have nonlinear step growth, right? If you remember nonlinear, we have the crossing point, crossing section, and we call it gel point. So what does that mean? Is we say that this gel is actually a product because of the cross-linking that happens. Okay. If you remember, we have linear, right? Linear chain. 
And if we somehow change the sum of the uh, concept inside, remember that we have the difunctional monomers. And if we increase the functional groups, it can make branch polymers, right? If we increase more than two, right? more than two uh, functional groups, remember. So we have the branch polymer. And somehow, if we take more, we, we have a network, right? We have a cross link polymer. So this will be we call the network here, right? The network. Okay. Now if we look here This is two comparisons, uh, uh, comparisons between this, this, let's say this is polymer A, this is polymer B, okay? Now the difference, the first one having network mobility is quite high, and this other one here, the network mobility is low. And then it is, it says it is because the crossing density, the left one is low, the crossing density is high. So what does that mean? Remember, the more you have the cross-linking, so let's, let's just take this example. Okay. So if you have linear polymer chain, okay, if you have a cross-link here, imagine, and imagine if you have this a linear chain, you can squeeze like a noodles. Remember, like a noodles. So, like a noodles. So you can squeeze, right? You can stretch in every possible way. But in crosslink, in crosslink, if the crosslink high, which means that this point you can add much more. And we move it, it's difficult, right? But somehow crosslink itself, it's not this okay, there's non crosslink, there's crosslink. But we have you can have some points that maybe in between, right? Okay, it's not, not too many. So in this between here, as you see here, it's, it can be moving, right? So we can say that it's, the probability is quite high. So that is like rubber, like elastomer. You can stretch, right? You can stretch. But the one that stretch is actually this one, not the cross one. But at some certain point, perhaps, uh, so it will not break down. Okay? So after crossing, you remember, uh, we cannot reprocess, right? We cannot reprocess the polymers. Okay? So let me just give you an analogy or maybe some maybe, uh, aspect on how to look at this uh, crosslink in terms of. Uh, when we uh, we try to stretch and then look look the mechanical property and then uh, when we add the solvent like how does it um, react okay let me add uh, one more page and then perhaps let me explain through the uh, first is we say no cross link I think, uh, let me uh, maybe make it more small. Sorry about that. Maybe de defined by three. Okay. So first is we have no cross link. Okay. And this is low cross link density. This is high. Crosslink 
density. Okay. 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 Let's say we have first no cross link like that. And we say that this is going to be independent chains. And then for the uh, low cross link, maybe let me just make this and then get into the cross link. Maybe just this two subject there. So we say that the connections is loose. Okay, loose loose connection right and then there is the high crosslink density perhaps the gel point is more That's gel points. So we say that here is strong connections. And then we try to, uh, to stretch the materials. So, so stretch the materials. So this three, we try to stretch. The first one will be yielding, okay? And flow has some flow. We call this viscoelastic. Okay? And the middle one, this is what we call it has elastomer property. So we could say elastomeric property, like a rubber. Rubbery. Okay. And then the, the right one, this will be hard. So there will be little deformation. And then, aside the mechanical property, we can also check the solubility. Okay? So we add a little bit right more bigger. So add solvents. The first one we can say generally we can see the uh, it will be dissolved so this will be the solu the solution or perhaps separate you can see some separations and this will be viscous and we can see it will be much more liquid The low crosslink density, because of the gel points, we are not going to dissolve everything. So it's not completely dissolved. Okay. So not completely dissolved. What happened here is we are going to have what we call swelling, swelling that will be in curves. 
So imagine to, to get you into um, understanding this solvents, uh, imagine that there is uh, water or maybe just uh, other solvents. It try to to take up the space there. Take up spaces between the paint, and then imagine the, the, the middle one also has some uh, solvent molecules here, right? And the problem is it still has this. So the other part of the uh, chains that are loose, it will take the water or it will take the solvent. And perhaps it can like a, like a, like a sponge, like it will be absorbing. So we call that that that, uh, that part, that part becomes swell. But it's not completely dissolved. So we call this swelling. It seems like a soft material. Or the one that we call gel. Okay. So the gel that you are imagining of, like gel in some products, it is actually the low cross link density polymer. So why it needs to behave like a gel? Because it's supposed to be dissolved, but it cannot be dissolved completely because of the, uh, the cross link. Usually, if I explain, elaborate in details like this, this will be important. And perhaps if you are interested in gels, uh, you can uh, elaborate more in the future. Okay. Now, the last one. The last one, if you see, if we input the solvent inside the um, polymer, you will see that it will be very difficult to, to get inside the space here because of the crux layer. Okay? So difficult to enter, which means that nothing happens. So we say here is insoluble. So insoluble. Or nothing happens here. Nothing really happens. Or we call also this is uh, solvent resistant. So it will stay as it is. So once it is crosslink for the high crosslink density, so we are going to uh, to have hard materials which cannot be dissolved. Okay, now the questions, the next question is how to crosslink. How to crosslink. Or before that, perhaps uh, the differences. Right? What's the difference between crosslink and polymerization? What do you think? Crosslink is it's kind of some reaction. Polymerizing and also reaction. But what's the difference? <laughs> this. This thing simply. Simple, it's simple. It's just logic. Simple logic. Simple, simple logic. What's the difference? You can say it's 
the kind of polymerization, partially polymerization you have. But in general, what's the difference? If we say it's polymerization and we say this is cross -play. The general, general difference. Okay. Remember? Polymerizations means that you have monomers, you have monomers, right? You plus this, and then it has, let's say this is A, B, for example. And then you have, or maybe let me write it blue. And then you have this A, B, right? A, B. And then depends on how many uh, iterations, can have this and right? This is the repeat unit, right? This is a repeat unit. And how many, how many uh, repeat units we will have here? Okay. It will depend, uh, determine how much the weight, right? But what is cross link? If you think cross link as a polymer, it is just polymer. So let me answer after the break. Right? Okay, so uh, let's continue. So what's the difference between cross-link and polymerization? Basically, cross-link, okay, if you look into the cross-link, so if you have two chains and you want to cross-link this chain, where will be the gel point? Where will be the uh, cross-link? Cross-link will be here, right? Will be here and here, for example. Okay, so cross-link, join together, right? So the chains, so chains join together by or on their uh, adjacent adjacent chains. Okay. Or maybe, let me rewrite this in more clear. So this will be uh, permanent, permanent bonds between adjacent polymer chains. Okay. Well, the polymerizations, you can see that we join together monomers and making Repeat unit with uh, this uh, monomers inside. But the cross link, basically, is from this bonding here. Okay. So, first, for the cross link, how to cross link? The first method is we can make a cross link after polymerization. Which means that we, we are going to incorporate polymer chains and then make crosslink between these chains. Okay. So for example, we have, um, let's say, uh, we have like two chains like this. Okay. And perhaps within this chain, we have, we have some components that can be Activate, okay. and when we activate that, maybe here is another one here. So when we activate this component, we say it's cross link. How to activate? It can be activated through some energy, like temperature. If we increase the temperature, if we uh, give lights, okay. So this will be. For example, make like that. So we can give temperature, light, or redox. Reduction oxidation process. Example here is the benzophenone, in which we have chain.
So we have two benzene rings and we have uh, unpaired electrons on the oxygen. And we activate by giving some lights. Of course, there will be some range for the lights. Okay? It depends on the components. So if we want to cross link, so let's say we cross link with another chain here. So let me give you the process. It's broke the bonds here, and it makes the, elect the electrons move there, and then it will affecting the chain. So if we plus this, then this electrons will attack. This is also having a free electrons. And in sense, this will give you I think let me make it a little bit smaller. Still have this electrons in the middle but here it's become OH because of the reactions from the unpaired electron and then we have another one that is free electrons on the other side okay. and eventually these two electrons will be paired together okay, so that will be the cross link So we are going to see that this is somehow going to be bonded together. So the polymer already in polymer uh, forms, and what we need to do is we just give them some uh, stimulus for the crosslink to be react. So we get the crosslink, and then this is the final products. And sometimes uh, why we are preparing this method is because Maybe when it's still in a polymer chains, it's easy to be uh, moved, it's easy to be handled. But when we give them uh, crosslink reactions, maybe it becomes hard. So it's easy for easy handling. Okay. And then the second is crosslink during polymer chain. So, this, that, so we are going to polymer, polymerize and also crosslink. So in the, in the same time. So usually the reaction is monomers one plus monomers two plus the cross linkers. Okay. This is cross linkers. Or maybe let me write on the, on the sides. So we are going to see that this will be having a directly connected cross link between monomer one and monomer two. So perhaps on number one is here, M1, M2, M1, M2, perhaps like that. And in between these two is a cross link. Okay, the example, let me just write in a simple way. So we have initiator. So we are going to, to use the radical. So metal 
and then plus this is another one here okay what will happen is we are going to see that this will be So this will be the cross linkers, cross linkers. This will be the monomers. So the, so the cross linkers will be at like a bridge between these uh, polymers. That polymers came from this radical polymerization. Take a polymer, comes paint, so we have a polymerization plus cross-linkers. Okay, now the third one is we call the multi-functional monomers, okay? For example, uh, perhaps we have A like that, chain A, and we have chain B which having this structure for the functional groups. Let's say the A and B is of functional groups. And we have another one here, A, A, A. And we have A, A at both ends. So if we combine this together, perhaps this is what it looks like. So A, A, and then in the middle, we have B like that. And then B and A is connecting. And perhaps we have this. So we can have uh, more than, perhaps maybe a lot uh, higher than uh, two functional groups. Okay, we can have more that we can tailor. Uh, so we can tailor the, we can tailor the polymers and its cross-linkers. So we can make maybe something like, like this, always in terms of uh, adjacent, or we can have maybe something like this, like having like an X like that. It depends on uh, how the functional groups, and we can try to find which structure that we want, and we can adjust, and then uh, that is how um, I think we can cross link. Also, we can think on uh, functional groups. Okay, and then we move to uh, the property for the gel, or maybe some definition first. So polymer gel is a network of cross-link cross -link macromolecules, as we see from the definition before. And we can say it's called a swelling, or it says that it's swollen by a liquid that we put into the solvents. The one that is uh, absorbing the water is the one that is uh, flexible, the flexible one, okay? In between the cross-link point. So it has strong affinity to the chain segments in between the cross-link points. The chain segments mean that it is the one that is a flexible one. This is the flexible one. And then uh, it, is, it is, we say the polymer gel because the ratio, okay, the volume ratio. So the volume ratio of the liquid to the polymer in the gel it can be above 99 percent so it's much more liquid inside but it's not liquid but it has liquid okay 
you see gel, you can absorb water, and it's, it's become like a liquid, but it's not totally liquid. So it, you say it can absorb much water. So based on this definition, then we can see that the gels will have uh, some unique properties. Okay. okay. Now the property, the first one is, as we mentioned, it's increasing dramatically in volume okay, by swelling. Okay. We can say that it's becoming like a super absorber, like in your uh, in the diapers, or in in, in for females, you use the, the, the pads for your menstrual pads. It's also super absorbent. And sometimes inside is the, we call the polymer gel. Okay? They, they have the polymer gel inside, polymer gel. So, which means that if we give liquids, it will absorb. I think for diapers for baby, um, maybe it will absorb almost 600, maybe 800 milliliters, perhaps. Or maybe around around five to six hundred milliliters. That's quite a lot. And then mechanically, the shape is between solid and liquid. So why between solid and liquid? We can see that it is like a solid because it has shape tension. It is uh, it wants to to um, it wants to uh, take some forms, but then it's still getting absorbed. The liquid getting absorbed inside. And then it's become like a like a gel, like a, like it's a, it, like it's loose the deformation like liquid, but it's still trying to be as like a solid. So it's between solid and liquid. But we also have a special case what we call the hydrogen gel. So what is hydrogels? This is actually network of uh, water soluble chains. So the chain is soluble. The chain is soluble, and hydrogels has much much applications, including your contact lens. It's also hydrogels, diapers, some um, polymer characterization uh, process. It's also using the hydrogels. Okay, and then its applications includes the. Super absorber, contact lenses, drug delivery, cosmetics, okay, um, wound wound dressing, to uh, treatment, okay, for treatment, some in foods, also, like in gelatin, um, in biotechnology for some uh, characterization process. We also have these applications, but I think you can check more okay, to to look on these applications. And then the next one is uh, we can have this water uptake. So hydrogels, if we see from a thermodynamics perspective, you can see that it can be anthropically uh, favorable. It prefers to interact because it has lower energy uh, and then it will uh, it will think that interaction between chain and water becomes um, easier and then that's why it's, it's become swelling okay and then uh, when the water uptake so when the soluble chains in between react with the water the cross link section it's still uh, no reaction with the water, right? The cross link section. So the only way the cross link will do is just to swell. Okay. The swelling means that it is uh, absorbing water, the, the segment between the cross link, but the cross link will, uh, will retain its shape. It will try to retain its shape. Because it's impossible to, to dissolve. Okay, this is uh, some uh, example. Okay, if we see uh, from this hydrogel. So first, let me just start from here. Okay. So uh, 
this gel, we can have some uh, responses. We can have some st st stimulus responses. Maybe we can have this stimulus based on temperature. We can have based on uh, maybe some uh, tension also. Okay. But let's say we are having the temperature, okay? because I think it's easier to, um, to analyze through this thermodynamics. Okay? It, it gives energy. If you see, this is the enthalpy. Do you remember it? Do you still remember this? <laughs> okay, great. So this is the free energy, enthalpy. This is the entropy, right? Okay. So what this is about is, if you see from the picture around here, the, the, I think the one here on the top, you'll see that this has some transition when you put above 100 degree or lower than the 100 degree. Okay. So we say, if you want to make this hydrophilic, okay, we need to create, basically, we need to create a bonding with water, right? To react this segment in between the cross we want to We want to make it um, react with, with the water, which means that we are going to, to take it according to its enthalpy. So we are we need to lower its enthalpy. Okay. Before the hydrophobic, what we can do is we want to make sure that uh, uh, the, this so I, I write here water will form a cage around hydrophobic moiety. So when you have the hydrophobic, is that here? Uh, let me check. Mm. Okay. So let's say this is this is water. Okay, this is water around here. So the water it, it wants to make to, to to go inside, but since it's hydrophobic, it cannot go inside. So the only way to make this hydrophobic is to make sure that the entropy is reduced. So see here, maybe get bigger. Let me explain in this part here. So what is hydrophilic means that enthalpically it's lower, lower. It's, it's low enthalpy. So this part is they they are much uh, preferred to react with the water. If the water will go here. And we say that this will be swelling. Okay. It is swelling because they they are prefer to interact with this uh, hydrogels. Okay. But when we have in another way, we want to make it into hydrophobic. Then the the water is kind of go inside. It kind of go. It, it it won't react with water. And what we have here is they are shrinking because the water is releasing the water is releasing so we can so we can adjust the temperature make it swell or make it shrink so absorbing water or releasing water okay so what we, what we have here is actually the conclusions based on this free energy okay this hydrogen will soluble in low temperature but in high temperature, it becomes insoluble. Because in high temperature, it becomes hydrophobic. Okay. It becomes hydrophobic. And in the low temperature, it's hydrophilic. So by changing the temperature here from this formula, if we take the higher, it's, it's practically more minus. It's lowering the free energy. But if we want to make it low temperature, the enthalpy will be higher, right? It means that it's soluble. From, from this uh, thermodynamics. This is for uh, that is the what we call the thermal responsive gel because gel can also be responsive with light. It depends on um, like a sensor. 
you have sensor for uh, temperature, you can have sensor for light, or you can have sensor for um, like you have the distance, or maybe sensor for sounds. If we can, we can adjust that. So stimuli responsive gel. This is in more, uh, in more general, okay? That it says it can absorb the moisture, and then when it's increasing temperature, it's, it, it, it's called in this paper, it's called it water oozing, okay. a little bit of water. So it's the start from the moisture, the gas, the paper, water paper, and then it becomes a liquid. So what the paper, Want to make is basically they want to absorb the moisture and then later it's releasing the condensed water. That is uh, the works done in this way. Okay, so that's that's the hydrogels. Okay, but I think uh, before we go to the block of polymers, okay, uh, I think block of polymers will be much more. Complicated. So I think for today's lecture, I will just end up here. That, that's okay. Uh, next week, we can focus more on block of polymers and polyelectrolytes. This I need uh, full hours for block of polymers and the poly polyelectrolytes. And then after that, the next two weeks will be uh, either a deep characterization or the process. So for this, this lecture, I will end up after here. Uh, maybe if there are any questions. Okay. So I think uh, you could maybe try to elaborate if you want to uh, look more into hydrogels. Okay, what is the uh, the unique property of hydrogels? What kind of uh, process to make one? Okay like the one that in contact lenses or maybe in cosmetics, okay, because there is also hydrogels. I think more in uh, in biopolymer, they are also can considered as a hydrogel, like in alginate, in uh, hyaluronic acid, that is typically for cosmetics. If you, sometimes you look your ingredients, if you use cosmetic, you will maybe hyaluronic acid, that is one of the common materials for cosmetics. And that is basically like a hydrogel. So I think that's it for today's class. And we're going to continue next week. So Thursday, no class, but please look in the Moodle. I will update the um, assignment and class discussion. Um, so basically discussion, what I expect is you can discuss with your friends, but please um, write a good conclusion from the discussion. Do not just copy paste okay, from the internet. And if you want to, if you want to provide graphics picture, I think that will be better. Okay, that will be better. Not just words. Okay. So I think that's it.